I was born into a family that was not too religious. My grandmother was Buddhist, so that was what we practiced at home, burning jaw sticks, joss papers, praying in front of the altar, etc. At the same time, my parents enrolled me into a convent where I was exposed to Catholicism. We said prayers and sang hymns every day, and I really enjoyed it. At that age, I never fully understood the concept of religion and the difference between the different creeds. I did not realize that individuals were expected to pick a religion. In fact, I thought that God was one and the same, and whether burning joss sticks or singing hymns, it was just the different means we had to reach the same God we all shared. The young me thought that everyone shared the same God, but we just communicated with him in our own ways. During my teenage years, I developed my intellectual domain tremendously. I developed a strong interest in science. Science was the most amazing thing to me. It explained many of the things that I never knew about so perfectly. Every time I learned something new, it was like something clicked. A piece of puzzle would fit and I could visualize how everything came together. Oddly, though, there was a particular part of my learning where this process failed me and did not give me the same satisfaction. And that was when we learned about the creation of the universe and the origin of life. No matter how I tried to understand and internalize the Big Bang Theory, it was not intuitive to me. It did not feel right. Likewise, when we were taught that all species on Earth originate from a single cell, it did not sit right with me. There was no click, no fitting of the puzzle, no images and visions in my head. All that laid flat on the paper. This time, I was not filled with satisfaction, but doubt. That bothered me, and I never knew why. Naturally, my love for science drove me to take a science course in university. I had previously developed an idolization of Darwin and his work. In that situation, there was no room for religiosity. No one could convince me otherwise, because, come on, it's science. Science was my love. I aspired to be a scientist. I made a hobby out of challenging my religious peers on their beliefs, quoting them grand questions from Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens that were meant to undermine their faith. They would often stumble and stutter, and I would feel triumphant as they would further reinforce my beliefs. During the last year of university, I met my husband. Admittedly, I had little to no interaction with any Muslims in the past two decades of my life. He was the first Muslim I met. I knew absolutely nothing about Islam. Since he thought to introduce Islam to me, I thought, why not ask him the questions I used to ask my religious friends? It stumped them, so it should stump him too. To my surprise, he gave me very assured answers, unlike the friends I had stumped previously. Since I know nothing about Islam, I thought to give him a chance. Okay, so when you're in the mosque, what statue do you pray to? There is no statue. We pray to God. Then... What do you pray to? God. Oh, okay. So who's your God? Who's the Muslim God? What's his name? He's not a Muslim God. He is God. The one and only. The creator. Allah just means the one and only God. As long as you believe in the creator. There's no your God or my God. It's our God. So you pray at him upwards? We direct our prayers in a particular direction. Oh, is it some holy direction? No, it is towards the Kaaba. Oh, the black stone? You believe it to be magical and that it possesses mythical powers, right? No, it is just a block made of stone. Huh, then what's so holy about it? It's not. Only a law is divine. It simply focuses every Muslim's prayer in the same direction. This particular conversation shattered so many preconceived notions I had of religions. Admittedly, I never bothered to deep dive into any when I was younger, but the aspects I thought were illogical were so eloquently addressed in Islam. I wanted to find out more. He told me about the Prophet, who was unlettered, and the Quran, which has not been altered in the past 1400 years. I was intrigued. This was such a refreshing perspective to religion. Everything that I thought were clear signs that religions were man-made were not manifested in Islam. I remember thinking to myself, if someone made this up, that person must have been a genius. It was different, refreshing, intuitive. I felt the click. It made sense. All praise be to God. He opened my heart that day as I began on my journey in Islam.